Good day, flight simmers. Today we're going to do a flight into Hurricane Idalia when it moved over Georgia. And we're going to use the King Air 350i and we're going to use a little nav map to create a flight plan. So we are going from Savannah Hilton Head International to Valdosta Regional in Georgia. And we are going to select a D. Archer Airport using little nav map and you can click on a gate for departure time if you want. I'm going to pick gate 14 and also you can select your departure runway and we are going to fly to Valdosta Regional and land on runway 30, 35, 35 and we are going to pick an ILS runway so we can make an ILS landing and approach using our autopilot and for runway 35 the megahertz frequency is 110.90 so I'm making a note of that uh, if you hold your mouse over these runways you can get information on them such as whether they're ILS or not but you can see where you have a um, green feather coming out from a runway, it'll be an ILS runway. It'll have a localizer that we can use. So here you can see I'm uh, creating the flight plan using little nav map. Now I've used little nav map uh, in other tutorials and I show how to create the flight plan. So here you can just see me kind of going through the steps, checking out some information. Um, to decide uh, if there is a preferred runway. If you hold your mouse actually over the little airport icon, and you can turn those on and off uh, using the toolbar up above, um, you'll, you'll find out um, things about the airport and the preferred runway. So there's the feather for ILS 35, and uh, that's the one I'm going to pick. And there's the flight plan we're creating on the left there as we accept different information. A uh, little nav map creates a flight plan on the upper left there in that little window. And you can see we are um, going to do an IFR. And we are going, I've got 5,000 feet uh, right now on there. But I can change that later if I want to. So I'm just picking uh, the approach for that runway. Uh, you just um, hold your mouse over the airport uh, icon and it'll tell you whether you have uh, approach procedures. So I'm going to select um, approach, approach procedure um, Kilo Alpha Gulf Gulf Echo, which is uh, an ILS approach. So you want to make sure you don't pick a nav or a localizer, pick an ILS approach. And you just find that by holding your mouse in that window that popped open on the right there. You'll find out which one of those is the ILS. So we got that done and I also use the uh, little icon uh, in the toolbar up above for calculating the flight plan, which now uh, entered some of the waypoints. Now I'm going to export that flight plan, save it as a Microsoft Flight One. You do that under File there, the pop-down menu. You can export it as a Microsoft. Now I'm just going to open up uh, Microsoft Flight Sim here, and I'm going to hit Load Save. And I've loaded that um, flight plan into the aircraft here, our King Air 350i. So, right here, space, load, select um, the flight plan that I saved. You just saw me save it earlier. Select that one and open it. And now there's the flight plan imported into Microsoft Flight Sim. So we've got our runway, you can see the correct runway, our gate departure, etc. And our waypoints. So 
so we are going to see what it's like flying into that hurricane weather with the King Air using autopilot and see how we do. Uh, you know, I inspect a pretty uh, hairy landing when we get there. So there's a little information on the King Air. They sell for around 8 million US. I use one for around 4 million, 4.5 million. And older ones would be like a 2 million, 2.5 million. The very first versions. So here we are at the airport in uh, Savannah, Hilton Head. And we are at gate 14. So inside the aircraft. Just check outside and make sure uh, where we are and use this checklist provided by Microsoft Flight Sim to get started. Parking if you're not familiar, set. you can click on evaluation Idle. and it'll, it'll show you where things Drop are and kind of walk you through the checklist like you're working with your co-pilot. I'd like to do that for the ones that are provided. There's only three checklists for the King Air. They didn't do a complete list of checklists. Max RPM. And these are Condition checklists. Levers. These are checklists for um, Microsoft Delta. Flight Sim. You know, the real world is going to be more extensive. But it's nice. It shows you where things uh, are. If you're just new to this SR aircraft. IFR to Valdosta, ready to copy. So now this is starting the engine. Right ignition and engine start. On. So, Nasser 616 cleared to Valdosta Airport. I'm going to walk through the Take startup the for the right climb. engine. And, um, on I'm going to let the co pilot takes over and does the left engine in the checklist. Nasser which is, you know, is realistic enough. Take off runway one zero I'm checking the engine, right engine feet. conditioner. Departure on one two five to Low idle when 12% N1 So minute. just check in the ITT and N1. N1 just monitor that. And then I'll walk you through the oil pressure. Monitor. Right oil pressure. Check. So it's a matter of right watching that. Right ignition and engine start. I'm just going to auto-complete it to get it to go. Sometimes it gets hung up a little bit. You don't want to rush it too much. Okay. I'm just going to auto-complete that and watch the lever. You can see it went to high iron. Okay, so now the co-pilot's going to do the left engine. And this this takes a few minutes to go through because you can see how long it took us to do the right engine. So just outside, have a look at these engines here. See the right engine's going. I'm not going to do a pushback here because um, it, it takes a while for them to get into position to push you back. I'm just going to roll out and turn right and head out to taxi for the departure runway. The left engine should start shortly. Just going to auto complete that left engine start there in case it got hung up. You can force finish, but um, we'll wait and see if it, it if it does it itself. If it doesn't, if it takes too long, you can hit the force finish button, and it will force finish the start. Okay, so it went off on its own. So now this next after starting engine, you just have to be careful. When you take the parking brake off, it's going to start to roll. So if you don't want to crash into buildings or other aircraft, etc. 
So avionic switch. And then you want to get your lights all set up. I'm just cutting my, uh, you know, my throttle back because uh, it's going to take off as soon as I release that parking brake. Just going to turn the lights on here. And then release the parking brake. And now it's starting to roll. So right now, uh, you can see I have the um, heads-up display on outside, so I can see what's going on. Okay, we got some warnings. You can turn them off. That's the parking brake that I put on. So I'm um, just looking at, uh, just checking once again here for the uh, frequency of that uh, runway 35 at our destination of Valdosta Regional. On the left, you can see all of our waypoints and our runway that we'll be arriving at. You can also see the wind there indicated at the top, that little yellow arrow on the top of the map, just above the airport. Um, Rose compass there. Sort of shows the wind direction and how strong it is. Okay, I'm going to set the altitude here for, I'm going to set it for 4,000 feet for now. And I'm changing the CDI source to GPS. So you just do that by pressing that screen, the primary flight display screen, where the compass is, and it'll bring up these uh, different split screens on the right. So you see I selected nav. If you, could, if you didn't catch that, just scroll back for a second. You can see how I got to it. So I set the nav frequency for runway 35 to be active. So procedures. You can click on procedures and you can see that that's the runway and if you click on flight plan you'll get back to where you can get nav so if you click on map there's nav again and there I clicked on flight plan so now I can see the waypoints you see that one right there F-A-S-E-X or F-A-S-E-K yeah we didn't ask for that one. Microsoft Flight Sim put that in. So Foxtrot Alpha Sierra Echo Kilo is uh, probably what the Microsoft put in to help with the approach to the runway. Even though a little nav map didn't pick it. So that uh, often happens I find. So I'm setting the vertical speed here right now you could do that before you take off at all and you can set it to uh, whatever you want I'm going to try and get it around 1800 feet for a climb per minute this aircraft's quite capable of that but that you know you can set it to less Okay, there's our before takeoff checklist. So these are the things you're going to want to do. Savannah Tower Ness Air 616 at runway 10 ready for departure IFR to Valdosta. Cleared for takeoff runway 10 Ness Air 616.
I haven't got the P-TOT heat on right now. Um, the, you know, the temperature is uh, quite warm today, but uh, if you're going to a higher elevation, definitely turn that on. So we're going to set our flaps for 20 for takeoff. We're going to release the brakes. Uh, there's your V1, VR, and V2 speeds. So VR, rotate at about 110 knots. Uh, landing gear retract and flaps retract when you get a good rate of climb. Right now I'm setting the flaps to 20 for takeoff. You check your engine, your instruments, make sure everything's looking okay. You can turn those taxi lights off now. I'm leaving the strobe light, I mean the uh, landing lights on because of the weather conditions and also I'm not going above 10,000 feet. So I'm just going to turn on some overhead lights here and get the uh, windshield wipers going. Uh, turn up some floodlights. It's a little overcast and dark so at night especially you're going to need to do this so that's where they are. Um, control 8 on your keyboard will bring that up that screen. That's control 1 to get back to the primary flight display. And then I'm just using my uh, button on top of my joystick to, ch to bring the view from co-pilot to pilot. So uh, full throttle here. And rotate at around 110 knots. After you get a good rate of climb, you can bring up your landing gear and flaps. Set flight director, feet. autopilot, yaw damper, nav, and that's on. Check to make sure the vertical speed's on. So we have autopilot running now, and I just set the barometric pressure to make sure we have the correct altitude. So here's our climb out checklist. You want your prop sinks? Well, that's inoperative, so just assume it's been done. Check your autopilot's running okay. Um, the landing lights, I'm going to leave them on. And your airspeed, you can get up to around 160, 170. Watch your prop torque and RPMs. And just check your engine instruments on the multifunctional display in the middle to the right of it. And just monitor. So I'm checking to make sure everything's okay here. And you can see by clicking that, I can get that split screen there by clicking on the uh, primary flight display where the compass more or less is and then you can select split screen in the upper right there and then once you get that you can select your options like uh, flight plan or procedures and like I said if you select flight plan it's going to bring up your flight plan but also the buttons for uh, the nav setting the nav frequency, nav 1 frequency, which we've already done. So there's your three screens. Primary flight display on the left, multifunctional display in the center with uh, some gauges that you can monitor right there. You can zoom in and out using that button monitor your prop and your ITT. So now right here I'm just looking at uh, this auxiliary screen here which is helpful for reference for your airspeed, your altitude. Right now the altitude's uh, only 31. 3,100. So there's their gauges you want to monitor and check to make sure everything looks fine. Torque, ITT, pressures and temperatures. And your prop, RPMs. 
So you can see right now we're flying right along that uh, red line, which is our flight plan, and you can see the aircraft in the compass. And the primary flight display is pointing, uh, I don't know, 179 for a heading, and our course is actually slightly different than that because we've got a crosswind, and the autopilot's correcting for that. I'm just checking my lights again. Doesn't hurt to recheck this stuff. Make sure everything's okay. And also, just showing you some of the switches that are operative. And that auto feather doesn't work. You know, that would be to, uh, if an engine shut down, you could auto feather. The auto feather would come on. And auto feather the, uh, that prop. And it, that would mean the prop would actually uh, have less resistance going through the air. It would be at an angle that would allow you to glide better without using as much fuel and the other engine uh, if it was still functional would be able to uh, you know take control of the aircraft and not have that drag on the right engine if the right engine shut down. Now you can set the engine levers to low idle during cruise right now you could do that if you want. Uh, so there's three positions fuel cut off low idle and high idle. If you pull it down to fuel cutoff, it'll shut the engines off. And uh, you're going to be in a stall. If you accidentally did that, you could hit the pause button on your keyboard and go to your checklist and restart the engines, and it will restart. In, probably in time to save your flight. So here we have the fuel gauges, and I'm just showing you some of these switches that are operational. There's your temperature inside the cabin, and there's your ELT switch. So that will send out an emergency response if you actually crash. There's a device in the rear of the aircraft that will start sending out a signal to help locate the aircraft. But you can uh, put that on. You can arm it if you wanted to. Up above, checking my lights again. Sometimes the wipers will work just fine, and then other times they just jam and they uh, stop working for some reason. Probably just a bug. Let's take a look at the cabin back here of the King Air. Yeah, beautiful. Um, sort of a neat seat configuration club style. Now there's your cruise checklist that you can go through. Just check all these things, make sure everything's going fine. We've been monitoring that. Now the radios are tuned to the comm settings automatically in my settings. The co-pilot takes care of that. So all I have to do is worry about flying the aircraft and let the co-pilot do that. So he'll be speaking to uh, ATC for us. Okay, so I'm going to check the barometric pressure again. And you see how it changed our altitude? And our altitude is only set to um, 3,000 that looks like, so I'm going to adjust that. For some reason I had it set to 4,000. There's a hurricane again. Now it's moving east, so it's not actually there right now. This is, uh, this is during the flight. So it's going to move, it, it's probably further east than that actually. So there we are, we've taken off from uh, Savannah, and we're heading south. And there's some clear uh, weather here, if you saw the uh, hurricane radar. You know, there's some clear spots before we turn and head uh, southwest. And that's when we'll start to really get into the uh, high winds and rain. I'm curious to see how um, the King Air will do in this weather and, and how difficult it will be to land. And I'm 
just checking my elevation on the map, map there, and I think I've got it set for 4,000. So I'm going to uh, adjust the altitude to 4,000. For some reason, it was at 3,000, but that's not an issue. You're going to have to hit vertical speed again and hit scroll on that with your mouse. Scroll it in the up direction and the aircraft will start climbing again. So with this type of weather, it doesn't hurt to periodically just check your barometric pressure by pressing B on your keyboard. Uh, for some reason, I'm able to hear myself or my co-pilot talking to ATC, but I cannot hear them. And that's a little bug, I think, that happens occasionally. Sometimes you can hear ATC and not yourself responding or vice versa. Sometimes you can hear the two-way communication. So there's that waypoint that uh, we didn't ask for that's in there, but uh, that's going to probably help with our approach, get us further out from the runway in order to line up. So don't be too concerned if you happen to see some extra waypoints in your flight plan as you approach the runway that you're going to land at. That's often done by Microsoft Flight Sim when they uh, import and calculate the flight plan. But the good news is the little nav map flight plan, I was able to export it as a Microsoft Flight Plan and then bring it up and, and it, it came into this aircraft. And the aircraft is flying quite nicely. There's the hurricane again. Jacksonville Center Ness Air, 6164,000 feet. So you can see the clear spots just south of us from Savannah that we're flying through right now. So, you know, I think uh, fairly realistic uh, reproduction of the weather. I mean, this is supposed to be uh, real time in a little map map. Uh, it's also the wind. You can see that wind uh, there at the top of the screen, that little yellow error. Well, that should be accurate. So this is Idalia on August 30th, uh, 2023, Wednesday. And uh, you can see the location there. And this is uh, around uh, an update on the location. I think. Looks like it's around 1.30 in the afternoon. So you can see uh, the hurricane off to our right in the westerly direction there. And that is how Microsoft Flight Sim is rendering it. Good look at the King Air. Nicely rendered by Microsoft Flight Sim. Beautifully done. It's, oh, I really do like this aircraft. It? It's a very popular and successful selling um, executive turbo prop. Just checking the barometric pressure. Hit reset. primary flight display to make sure everything looks fine. If you look at the top there of the primary flight display screen, you can see um, that it's on GPS and autopilot, etc. The altitude, what it's set for. And uh, on the right, you can see our altitude is at 4,000. But I have set it for 2,000 because we're going to descend to that for our approach and pick up the ILS glide slope. And our airspeed uh, indicator there is showing 202 knots.
the aircraft is heading uh, sort of in a southwest direction right now and you can see that from the compass the heading bug uh, uh, is right on north so if you were to right click on the heading indicator dial that heading bug would swing right up to the direction our nose of the aircraft is pointed oh, just double checking runway to make sure that's set properly. You click on that screen and you can see what's happening. It's changing. And nav 1, just double check. Proper frequency is active for that runway. So those are some of the things you do on your checklist. And to go back to map, you just click on map. And then you can zoom in and out on that split screen as well. Right now, you can see that there's a button up there on the right uh, that says full. If you click that, you'll get a full screen. It'll get rid of that split screen. That's in the primary flight display. Right now, I'm going across and checking everything on the multifunctional. There's the auxiliary display screen with airspeed and your altitude indicators. So that's a good reference in case your primary flight display goes out. Just click on the heading and the heading bug's shot to the top there. So we've got an airspeed gauge and an altitude gauge on the primary flight display as well. There's also some command bars up there. on the flight display that sort of is not uh, a part of the flight. Just checking the uh, heads up display information as well while I'm on the outside. But there you get a good look at uh, myself and the co-pilot in there flying the airplane. Yep, very nicely done. Gloss pipes coming out, the rivets, the lighting, it's very good. It looks like the eye of the storm we're going by here. I mean, the, the storm is moving east. So right now, this is just a, uh, a frozen shot of the weather that I got on the weather channel. It, it wasn't updated there. So I'm not sure exactly at this moment where the storm is, but that kind of looked like the eye. Like I said, if you don't want to do the whole flight, you can fast forward to just before we make a turn and approach for landing if you want. But if you want to watch and see how this flight goes and the weather is rendered by Microsoft Flight Sim. And then you can stick around. We're going to take a look at some stuff as well. I'm just turning on the PTOT heat to show you where that's at. Uh, definitely if you're at higher altitude and it's colder outside, you want those turned on. And and often they're turned on anyway. It you know, doesn't do any harm. That's inoperative. That's the auto feather button, I believe, right there. And some of these are inoperative and some of them are operative. So these are uh, ones that we used when we did the checklist, like the avionics master and the battery, etc. So it's nice to familiarize yourself with them, but if you don't know where they're at, use the Microsoft checklist. And uh, if you hit evaluation, it'll take you step by step through where all these different uh, things are located. And you can also auto-complete the item or auto-complete the whole page if you want to speed things up. Oh, King Air looking fantastic. Heading into 
Hurricane Adelia. Nice to be able to check things on the outside if you have this uh, heads up display. That's heads up display on full. You can minimize it and the screen, you know, the, the bars on the bottom right and left are reduced and you're just going to basically get um, your airspeed and engine. Uh, you're not going to be able to get, you won't get quite as much information if you want to, uh, don't want them in that much uh, of the screen space taken up with them. Alrighty, GPS, autopilot, altitude, what it is. So that makes sure you can see if everything's working okay. There's your comm settings. That's your transponder. I just put on ident there. Allows the pilot to transmit a signal. If you wanted to see what I said there, you can just pause it. So you can see the aircraft uh, turning now, and you can see those bars in the primary flight display, sort of giving us our uh, pitch and attitude. So we're following the flight plan quite nicely. We cleared that VOR station. So GPS is certainly a lot more popular way to fly today. It's kind of replaced the VOR navigation system, which is more or less still used for some uh, areas where there is no um, ILS station or landing ILS approach at airports or localizers if they're not available. So you can, you can do a VOR flight, they're fun to do, uh, but the GPS certainly has replaced them and the VOR is going to be maintained as a backup system uh, for a long, long time. So it doesn't hurt to learn how to use it. It works very similar. It's just that uh, the VR stations set out a signal that you have to set in NAV1 and NAV2 frequencies to pick them up and, and for the aircraft to follow them, but the um, King Air will do that quite nicely. There's the hurricane again. So this is the same uh, shot, a free shot of what it looked like at around 1.30. So basically, uh, we're heading into it now. So you can see the wind blowing at the top, that little yellow pointer arrow right at near Savannah on the thing. It's sort of telling us what our wind speeds are in the direction. So that's why the aircraft is uh, sort of tracking uh, in a southerly direction to compensate for the wind which is blowing pretty strong so the autopilot does a really good job um, of compensating for that wind so making it more realistic so you got a lot of information here there's the pointer for the wind got a lot of information in the lab map it's fantastic for creating flight plans and finding uh, where your uh, waypoints are, you can see them there. Those are those little magenta with the magenta triangles. And to, you can turn those wind bars on and off. I got them on right now for ground level, so I know what the wind's like at the airport when we get there. You can also put your mouse over the airport to get the uh, Met our weather information for the airport. It's pretty good, pretty realistic. So you can see what I mean. The aircraft's nose is pointed in a more of a southerly direction. And you can see that on the uh, map there. You can see your actual course that you're flying. You can see your actual heading and your bearing.
that area uh, on the dash where the uh, autopilot is, etc., that's called the AFCS control unit, automatic flight control system. Another look at the hurricane weather map. You can adjust your pop RPMs if they get a little too high using those prop levers. So I've got the altitude set right now for 2,000 feet in preparation for when we have to do our descent using vertical speed mode there on the flight control system. So you can continue um, just doing monitoring your instruments here because we're in instrument flight rules IFR so keep an eye on your oil pressure temperature your props RPMs ITT temperatures etc and just monitor um, you know, your speed your speed and altitude especially in conditions like this sure everything's running fine and there's no warnings We're coming up to the next VOR station now, which is one of our waypoints, so we should be turning shortly and heading pretty much due west. If all goes well and the uh, autopilot continues flying the flight plan. Descend and maintain 2,000 feet in SR 616. Okay, we're going to descend to 2,000 feet now to get to the right uh, altitude for that waypoint uh, FASIC, which was added by Microsoft Flight Sim um, to the little nav map plan. Probably give us a better um, approach. Uh, just double checking some things here on the flight plan so we can see um, our waypoints there and you can also see um, the altitudes we have to be at. just checking the actual waypoints on the little nav map and you can see that FASIC isn't in there but uh, it's going to give us a little further out from the runway to turn to make the approach so something uh, Microsoft Flight Sim did when it was imported into the uh, K2 
King Air. So um, we are on to our next waypoint, and you can see in the top of the screens there, it tells you the, the waypoint you're going to now, it tells you your bearing, your distance, your estimated time to get there. So very helpful information to have. Gives you your ground speed and your actual tracking direction that you're going on to adjust for the wind, etc. I'm just checking the barometric pressure again, make sure everything's okay. And we are going to have to start descending soon. Here we go. Let's just uh, hit vertical speed. I'm just checking um, the messages that you get from ATC because we're not hearing them for some reason. You're just hearing uh, our correspondence with them over the air. But at any rate, they asked us to go to 2000, so we'll head down. It's hard to find it when you're scrolling through here because there's other aircraft messages on there. We've got time to get down, so I'll do it shortly. Click on that heading bug and you, you'll see your heading bug will fly right up and point in the direction that your aircraft is, the nose is going. And just in case you need to switch to uh, heading mode, if uh, you lose your nav direction, especially where we have this extra waypoint added here, we'll see what happens here. You can see it's on our flight plan in the uh, multifunctional display screen. So we are headed towards that waypoint. We should be there in about seven and a half minutes. So once again, uh, just go through your checklist and make sure that um, barometric pressure is good, your airspeed is good, uh, your oil temperature and pressure, your props, ITT. And your RPMs. So I'm just going to descend now, and there's our descent checklist. Check ATIS, airport information, altimeter set, auto feather armed, descent speed around 180, 
flaps and landing gear. Check that they're up right now. Check your fuel. Uh, you can check in for weather at ATIS using your air traffic control from the toolbar up ahead. And the uh, I just parked the windshield wipers there. They stopped working, so we'll have to put a little report in for maintenance to fix the windshield wipers on this aircraft. They were freezing and getting stuck a bit on the flight. So they're parked now out of the way. We don't have to worry about the transition layer because we didn't go uh, to 18,000 feet. But if you were, that would be part of your checklist to uh, reset your altimeter back to uh, the normal altimeter for your altitude and information you're getting from air traffic control. The well, range coming down a little heavier now. I'm watching my speed. And we are reaching our altitude of 2000 and holding. So very shortly we're going to be turning and uh, doing our approach. Give you a little look at the weather outside and the aircraft and see how it's flying on autopilot. You can see we're at uh, 2,000 feet now and holding. through the checklist stuff again just a second time make sure everything's okay those conditioners could be on low idle but now they have to go full up for landing high idle You can see at the bottom our two airspeed is a little different than the airspeed that's showing on the um, speed gauge there at 171 down below. You can see it's a little bit higher. That's adjusting for the wind, etc., and everything. Uh, right now we're on GPS autopilot, altitude hold, and uh, 2,000 feet. And you can see there's a G there on the altitude gauge on the right. Barometric pressure is okay. Check that again. Just reset it. And that G, that little diamond there in white will turn green when we get closer.
There's our aircraft heading for Vasic Waypoint, and then we will turn towards the runway. Runway 35. You can see the wind direction there. It's coming across, blowing across out of the west right now for the, for the hurricane. So uh, the autopilot is going to have to adjust and we'll probably have a an exciting landing because I'll have to take it off autopilot right at the end to manually land the aircraft but I'll leave it on autopilot uh, as long as possible be, as long as it's working well and take, keeping us on course for the localizer. So we'll be turning here shortly. So I've got my speed down now uh, into that white bar on the airspeed gauge. So we're doing about 151. There's that waypoint we're headed to, and we'll just turn shortly. Sometimes it turns before it actually gets to the waypoint. But you can see that um, that's not a bad thing to do to fly out to this waypoint because it gives you a little bit longer approach so you can get ready, get your landing gear down, flaps, etc. Rain's coming down pretty good right now, as you can hear. So I'm just keeping an eye on these gauges here. Make sure you can see us turning there. You can see our bars up there showing our, our pitch and our attitude with respect to the horizon. So we're centering there and you can see on the multifunctional display screen uh, we are turning towards the airport. And it'll be a good time to scroll in a little bit. I'm just hitting the heading bug so that it points in the direction of the aircraft there. And just going to scroll in a bit so I can see things a little better. See our waypoints that we're headed to. Yep, we're going to check in all our instruments carefully here. I don't have de-ice on because of the temperature. My mouse just happened to be scrolled over that at the time, so it's lighting up. Tower on 128 decimal tree, 5 Nessair, 616. Valdosta Tower Nessair, 615 miles south inbound ILS runway tree 5 approach. A little quick. Cleared ILS runway tree 5 approach Nessair, 616. Yeah, a little quick look there at the uh, nav map to see how we're making out. And you can see the nose of the aircraft is pointing in, in a westerly direction. So that's the autopilot trying to keep us on our course for the approach to the runway. So right now, uh, we have it on the localizer. You can see it switched to LOC1. So that frequency we entered on NAV1 of a 110.90 megahertz is actually active right now and we are following that uh, localizer into the runway. So it should, uh, autopilot should do its best to try and keep us right on track uh, for the runway. So there's another look at it. So see that. Uh, So I've got the uh, approach button pushed on the 
flight control button on the dash inside the aircraft and we should pick up the glide slope shortly. That's going to start descending, turn green and GS letters on our primary flight display will turn green as well and that's about right where we're going to pick it up. And uh, she'll start descending on her own using the autopilot at that point. So you can see that green diamond coming down there. So there's your uh, approach checklist. You get flap set to 20 at first and your landing gear down and then uh, as we get closer we're going to put uh, full flaps. Try and get your speed down to about 105 knots somewhere in that vicinity. So there are your items to check. Landing lights, props, fuel condition, lever full. Your props have to be high RPM. So just go through these items as you are approaching. Make sure everything's in order. And we are descending now. You can see that we picked up the glide slope. So, And you can see on the primary plate display there that the GS has turned green now. Which means we are on the glide slope and descending nicely. So just before we get there, I'm going to have to take off the autopilot. But I'll leave it on as long as I can. There's our distance to the runway showing up there. We're getting pretty close. Visibility is terrible, of course. Flaps are full down. For landing, landing gear down, three green. Landing speed around 100 knots. There's the hurricane view again. So you can put your reverse thrust on when you finally land, if you want. You can do that manually with your uh, mouse inside by pulling back on your throttle to get it into reverse thrust or you can actually program a button into your joystick or Xbox controller to activate it. There's also a keyboard uh, function for that that you can look up. I believe it's at Shift F2 or Control F2. So right now visibility is very poor, still can't see the runway, but I've still got it on autopilot and you can see how we aren't perfectly lined up from the compass here, the green localizer needle, but uh, we're doing pretty good. And it's mainly because the wind is coming very strong out of a westerly direction blowing us off course. So the autopilot is fighting as much as it can to keep us on track and when I can see the runway, I'll take the autopilot off and then go for the runway and try and pull off a landing. Okay, there's the runway. I can see the lights flashing now, so I can take it off autopilot and bring it in for a landing. I'm going to have to make some adjustments because it's pretty windy. And this is about where you can crash the airplane. So let's see how I do here. I'm going to try and get as close to the center of the runway as I can. Oh, I can see a little better now. Okay, make sure you get your speed down. There we go. Reverse thrust. There we go. Okay, take off your reverse thrust. Bring up your flaps. And we're going to pull over here and go through our checklist again. Turn on our taxi lights, turn off our landing lights, etc.
So there's our taxi to ramp checklist. We can go through some of those things. Taxi lights on, retract your flaps, strobe lights off. Anti-ice, we didn't have it on. Maximum speeds, 20 knots for taxiing. Elevator trim, take off if you had it set. And avionics, uh, so you can communicate with ATC. I think we're just going to go to general parking here. Yeah, we don't seem to have the option to taxi to the gate, so I won't worry about that. We have the blue uh, arrow ribbons on in our settings, so that'll one, two, one decimal, seven, Nassar, help six, one, guide six. us to where we have to go for parking. So we'll just pull into our parking spot and we will then uh, be able to go through our shutdown checklist. That autopilot warning came on for some reason. We had it off and it was a little delayed and alarming I guess. So there are some little glitches that occur sometimes when you're flying your Microsoft Flight Sim. We'll have to put in a little report on those windshield wipers that stop working on us for maintenance to fix. But um, yeah, there are some little glitches that occur. And this flight ran pretty good actually. Sometimes uh, Microsoft will freeze up on you or crash especially when you have a little nav map running. So we're going to go through a shutdown checklist here now. And I'll just turn off that safety master warning for the uh, parking brake that I just put on. Okay, let's go through the checklist. Thank you very much for joining me on the flight. I hope you found it interesting flying into a hurricane. Uh, it's the first time I've tried this in Microsoft Flight Sim because I wanted to see what the weather looked like and how the plane would handle and how difficult it would be to land in, under these conditions. So this is basically a tropical storm, I think. I'm just going through the shutdown uh, checklist now. Just making sure everything's done. At some point you might get this screen coming up here, so I'll hit the continue button in order to continue my shutdown. But there it is, the parking brake set, throttle to idle, auto feather off, flight director off, avionics switch off, taxi lights off, nav lights off, PTOT heat off, fuel condition levers to cut off, so you can check your pops you know, down and prop to feather position. Uh, beacons off, panel lights off, and then when you turn your battery switch off and your generator pretty much shuts everything down. That's sort of the final thing. But this is getting it ready for the next flight crew so they can go through their startup properly. So once again if you enjoyed the uh, video please give me a thumbs up and subscribe I have a lot of other videos I've done and I enjoy doing them it's more of a hobby for me I don't have enough subscribers to make any money on this <laughs> I know some people have thousands of subscribers okay so that looks like it's it Thank you for joining me. Catch you next time, Flight Simmers.